Greetings, it's the Digital Dog. Today I put together a short tutorial in which I want to illustrate why you might want to avoid using CMYK values for color correction. A week doesn't go by that I don't see someone on the internet asking, how should I go about color correcting images? They usually ask about skin tone, and then someone will post some sort of a tutorial talking about the use of CMYK. In this tutorial, I want to show you why I think CMYK is probably the least appropriate color space to be using for this kind of work. There are other color spaces that are much easier to understand and work with and don't present the problems that we see in CMYK. If you've seen this slide before in any of my other tutorials, you probably are familiar with the concept that when we're working with images in Photoshop, we're working with millions of solid colored pixels. And in context, they look like images. But as far as Photoshop is concerned, each one of these tiny color pixels has a set of numbers. Now, in this particular example, we're looking at an image in color match RGB. We're looking at an individual pixel that represents some skin tone near this particular model's eye. And we see the values are red 103, G52, B39. Now, this could just as easily be four sets of CMYK numbers, or they could be lab numbers. In fact, in this slide, you can see to the right of the RGB values are a set of CMYK values. Well, one of the problems with CMYK is that it's a highly device-dependent color. Why has CMYK been recommended for so many years? Well, if you go back and look at the history of this type of work, prior to even the release of Photoshop, before the Noel brothers even thought about Photoshop, high-end drum scan operators were working with equipment that scanned their images and spit out CMYK output ready files. These are RGB devices, but back in the old days, the only thing you could get out of these particular scanners was CMYK. So these drum scan operators spent a lot of time learning how to correct the numbers specifically for their output devices, a particular press, running a particular paper, in a particular behavior. That's why I say CMYK is a highly output dependent color space. Every CMYK device is going to produce a different mix of values versus the other. Today we have much better color models in Photoshop that we can use to do this type of work. And so in this particular tutorial, I'm going to recommend that you consider looking at the lab color space, or if you're working in say Lightroom or Camera Raw, an RGB working space. The preferable color space would be lab. It's a device independent color space. So it doesn't matter what the source color space may be, whether it's sRGB or Profoto RGB, the lab values that you'll see are always non-ambiguous and consistent. This is simply not the case with CMYK. Here's a quick example of two CMYK color space loaded in Photoshop and the same image using the same sampler point on the skin. This happens to be a 5x5 five five sampling. And you can see the numbers are radically different between the two color spaces. Here's yet one more example where I've picked five different CMYK color spaces and using the same sampling, in this case 11 by 11 showing what those CMYK values are. One of the problems that I encounter when people recommend using CMYK is they don't define the CMYK color space. They simply say, these numbers or this ratio should be this or that in CMYK. And they ignore the fact that every CMYK color space is going to give you a different set of numbers. And here's another problem with CMYK. So many rules and ambiguity. You can pause the video if you want and look at some of the text that I've captured from a few websites that try to explain how to use CMYK to color correct skin tones. There's a lot of uh, complexity here and we still don't know what CMYK color space they're talking about. So here we are in Photoshop, and I have what I like to call a color reference image. You'll see a number of these color reference images throughout the tutorial. This is a group of color images called the Roman 16s, which are an excellent uh, set of images for printing and evaluating. They're not inexpensive, but I thought they would be an excellent choice to use for this tutorial. What I've done is I've gone in with my sampler tool, my color sampler tool, and I've placed two sample points in the skin tone area of this woman's face. They're literally 
one on top of the other. I'm going to move them a little closer so that they're right on top of each other. And now you can see that sampler 1 gives us our RGB values and sampler 2 gives us our CMYK values. Where does this CMYK value come from? Well, if we go into our Photoshop color settings while this is open, I'm going to use Command Shift K on the Mac, you'll notice these are the CMYK profiles I have loaded on this particular Macintosh. Now, as I toggle between color space in this particular menu, Photoshop is going to do a conversion from RGB to CMYK. And what you want to do is look at how the RGB numbers remain fixed, but the CMYK numbers change as I toggle. So here's Japan Color 2001, here's Photoshop Swap, or Photoshop for default, generic CMYK, whatever that is. Let's go here and pick an output profile for uh, printing to a blurb press, or finally going to an HP digital press. As you can see, all the numbers change as I toggle these particular color spaces. So the first problem with working in CMYK is that until you define the actual CMYK color space for a particular output device, you're really being incredibly ambiguous in terms of what CMYK numbers that you want to hit. It's for this reason that I think that this is both a very non-intuitive, highly device-dependent uh, option and really not the easiest way to be working. There's a much better color space that we can be using, and that's LAB or LAB. It is device independent. So in this particular slide, I'm showing you another Roman 16 skin tone. And what you're going to see is that I've set the samplers for LAB. Now, it doesn't matter whether or not the image is in Adobe RGB or sRGB or any RGB color space. Photoshop is going to convert that RGB value into lab. And those lab values are going to be fixed and non-ambiguous. So one of the things that makes lab such a great color space for looking at numbers is it isn't based on any output device. The other thing is that we only have three sets of values. L, which is lightness, and your A star and B star. The easy way to remember the A and B stars is B is the blue to yellow axis, think of B, and the A is the magenta to green axis. But that really isn't important at this point in this tutorial. The idea is that we only have three numbers to look at and they are device independent. In fact, in working with skin tone values, we don't even need to really look at the L star value, which is lightness we're really concerned with the A star and the B star value. Here we have three Roman 16 test files in my printer test file and I've placed sampler points. And the LAB rule is simply to look at the A star and the B star values. What you'll notice in this particular slide is that A and B values are rather close to each other. They should be no more than say 15 values apart. They should have a positive value. So you can see that all of these images have slightly different skin tones. Actually, the image on the lower left is from my printer test file in Color Match RGB. The three other images are in Adobe RGB from the Roman uh, 16 reference images. And you can see that all of the values are relatively close. They don't vary more than the 15 values that I've specified. In fact, they are relatively close. And using this information, I'll show you how we could go about color correcting our skin tone in Photoshop. So back in Photoshop, the first thing I would do is obviously make my sampler point with the correct sampling. I have this set for 11 by 11. It could be 5 by 5. You certainly wouldn't want point sample. You want to have some sampling of the color pixels. This is a relatively uh, decent sized file, so I'm going to pick 11 by 11. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle this from CMYK to LAB or lab color. Now these images are, as I said, color reference images. We believe them to be perfectly color corrected from the get-go. And uh, doesn't mean we couldn't adjust this a little bit if we so desired. The important thing to look at here in the info palette is that the A star and the B star are relatively close together. You can see that the A star has got a value of 15, the B star has a value of 22, and so they fall within the uh, rule, if you will, that we want to keep these two values very close to each other within about 15 units. 
But for grins, let's see what it would be like if we were to color correct this image based on this particular rule. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing this. You can use curves and so on and so forth. I'm going to do something very, very simple. Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm going to go into hue saturation. And what I'm going to do is simply move the hue slider such that the A star and B stars get closer together. So look what happens if I bring this down to about right about here. You'll notice that now they're both reading about 20 instead of 1520. And I'll toggle the preview on and off. And you can see basically the skin tone warmed up a little bit. Uh, I happen to feel that the original values were fine. I think we're getting a little bit of maybe some blue pollution from the background onto the skin. And at this point, this is somewhat of a judgment call in terms of what looks good on your calibrated and profiled display. And what I'm seeing on my display and what you're seeing over the internet is different. Um, but basically, there are all kinds of ways that you could try to get these values closer together. Uh, just because both A star and B star are 20, if I go OK, here's the after, here's the before. And of course, I've affected other colors in the image, so we'd want to do this selectively on the skin. But I wanted to just give you an idea of what you see when your A star and B star are numerically the same. So at this point, as I said, it's somewhat of a judgment call. But you can see how you would be able to affect the A star and B star channels such that you get a closer match. So going back to this particular slide, as you can see, it's not necessary for the A star and B star values to be exactly the same. That's not what you want to necessarily be doing. I'm just using these well uh, rendered skin tones to show you that they are very close. If you were working with a skin tone that looked pretty awful on screen, uh, look at the A and B star values and adjust so that they are relatively similar as you see here. Now what about RGB? RGB is only a quasi device independent color space. It isn't quite as effective as lab, but in this particular slide I want to show you that in Lightroom, if you happen to be using that product, uh, we have six different skin tones here. Some of them are images of mine, some of them are from the uh, Roman 16s. There's a very well-defined uh, ratio, if you will, whereby in Lightroom, you're working with percentages, not 0 to 55 scale. You can see that basically the red value is about 10 units higher than the green value, which itself is about 10 units higher than the blue value. So I'll leave this up on the screen for just a second. Hopefully you can see the particular values. If you're working in Lightroom, and you're working outside the soft proof module, in other words, you're working in what is known as Melissa RGB, you could, again, use your HSL sliders or other controls within Lightroom to get the skin tone values using these three uh, sets of numbers relatively close. Again, this is just sort of a broad-based set of number recommendations. I prefer to use the numbers only once I see on my calibrated display that my skin tones look good. Uh, but if you're a number person, this should give you some guidance. The other thing that I would suggest that you do is begin to build collections of images whereby you have skin tone values that you know reproduce well. Here you can see in Lightroom that I have a keyword called skin, and when I've uh, successfully reproduced the images and have seen that they look great on my output devices, I then tag them with a keyword skin. And the nice thing here is that you can then use these as a visual reference as well. You could, for example, call up some skin tones that you know visually are going to reproduce correctly and place them next to particular skin tones that you may be having problems color correcting and use these as references. In other words, look at them visually on your color calibrated display. And I think that you'll see that images that have poor skin tone values will look uh, incorrect in comparison, and you can use these as a reference. In conclusion, if you do need to color correct using numeric values, do you want to use CMYK, which is based on some print color space, or maybe lab, which is much more intuitive, easier to look at and understand, or perhaps if you're working in Lightroom or Camera Raw, you need to be working with RGB numbers. That's it for today. Hopefully you got something out of the tutorial. Thank you very much.